thank you all very much for coming. Um, this session is about how we teach about the EU and why that's important at the moment now, given that we've uh, the UK has left the European Union, why is it still important to teach about the EU? I'm guessing as you've come along to this uh, this session, you, you feel that there is an importance already, so we won't spend too quite too long on that. But um, we also wanted to share with you how we've been doing that uh, as a pilot um, over the last few uh, weeks. Um, my name is Asher Jacobsberg. Uh, I run a small social enterprise called Involver, and we've been employed by the European Parliament to run two programmes for them at the moment. One is EU sessions, uh, educational sessions in your schools, which um, I think most of you have been involved with, um, either coming to Europe House to have those sessions or um, having them run in your schools or more recently virtually. Um, the other project uh, which I've been running is the European Parliament Ambassador Schools Programme. Um, and so it's through that that we're gaining some new insights into how we can engage or get students to engage with the European Union, Union and the European Parliament um, and the broader kind of political space around them. Um, and so we wanted to talk about some of the things that we've been doing with that, some of the things that we found out running this pilot over the last few weeks. And so we've also got uh, along with us, uh, Daniel Ratcliffe, who works for the European Parliament Liaison Office in London. Um, so some of you may have had some interactions with Daniel as well, um, but he's the uh, kind of maven on all things uh, European Union, European Parliament. Um, he can link us up with all kinds of other schemes that the European Parliament is running as well. Um, and he'll explain a bit about why the European Parliament is still funding programmes in the UK. Um, and Charlotte Richer and Rhys Nelson from the Cherwell School and USP College, respectively. Uh, they're two of our first European Parliament ambassador schools, uh, recently been awarded their accreditation, uh, sending out certificates to their students, and their schools will be receiving plaques and logos and things to use. Um, and so they've been working as what we call senior ambassadors with their junior ambassadors, who are their students, to look at how they can do education about the European Union, how they can do education about engaging students with uh, those wider political questions in more creative ways, rather than just through a sort of straightforward uh, lesson on this is how a law is passed and how the uh, various uh, negotiations go between the UK and the European Union, but actually thinking about what does being part of Europe as a wider entity mean, and what does that mean for the, the lives of their students? Oh, uh, sorry, skipped on a couple of that. So the first question to ask is why do we teach about the EU? And obviously there are specific components in certain curriculum areas, but what we are trying to encourage and what we think is working well in these EPAS schools is looking at a broader kind of range of things. Uh, the impact on the day-to-day -day lives of our students right now, and of course, in the future, um, the things that, uh, that are going to affect them, both in terms of the food they eat and the things they learn and the places they work. Um, but thinking not just about what does that mean for citizens in the UK, but citizens around the world as well. The EU being such an important um, body in terms of trade means that it sets laws which are, or sets rules, which are applied across the world. Um, how do they, as people going into the world of work, um, feed into that? Um, and it's those political issues that we think can be a real hook. What are those uh, areas where those students are interested anyway? They may have gained an interest through the big debate about Brexit. Um, we heard that from some of our students that we were working with uh, today at USP College and yesterday at Channing School, that Brexit was the thing that sparked their interest in politics. So that's one thing that we might hang it on, but it's far from the only thing that we might engage them with, uh, with the European Union. Um, we've had all kinds of things coming up from the European Space Agency to climate change, not surprisingly, human rights, LGBTQI plus issues. Um, so, and um, trying to get those students to understand that the European Union has an impact on all of these things, that the UK government has an impact on all of these things, and that they can have an impact on both of those institutions, but more importantly, that they can have an impact uh, on their local communities, and that through working democratically, through doing teamwork, through educating themselves, educating each other, then 
they can uh, um, they can have uh, an impact on the on the world around them. We're also trying to encourage a strong, positive relationship with uh, European member states as neighbours, not necessarily as something uh, as a political entity, but just as uh, the our closest um, physical and in some cases cultural uh, um, uh, uh, neighbours that we that we should learn about those that we should have a positive relationship and one of the things that we haven't done so much this year but we're very much looking forward to doing next year is creating direct links between schools in the UK and schools in the European Union and that that's something which a lot of uh, the students that we've been working with this year have been particularly kind of excited about to think how can they have those kind of direct uh, uh, direct links so of course I'm going to let Charlotte and Reese talk a bit more about the kind of curriculum links and how they've tied it in in their school this year. Um, but one thing that's important to emphasize, and I will emphasize this particularly before Reese starts talking because he is a politics teacher, but um, we're not just talking about the EU and the European Parliament as politics, as something to study as a um, um, in um, a kind of abstract sense and in terms of laws and rules, but something which uh, affects everything in our day to day lives, but also linking across the curriculum. So we've had senior ambassadors who are languages teachers, history teachers, geography teachers. Food came up as a big issue, particularly when we were talking to schools in the Republic of Ireland that have been doing EPAS for a number of years, that lots of their cultural events revolve around sharing food. Um, so how do we work with the school kitchens, the college kitchens? How do we work with the uh, food technology departments to explore that? Um, citizenship and social action, that broader uh, view of what it means to be uh, a political animal um, and of course also work experience and careers through the way that we're encouraging you to work with um, uh, uh, to learn about the European Union and teach about the European Union we want that to be in uh, a positive interactive way that involves teamwork planning marketing um, all these kinds of skills which can be used in later lives and we hope that the students that are getting involved in this EPAS program um, are going to then use those skills that they've learned when they're applying for university, when they're applying for jobs or further vocational qualifications. So I will let Charlotte and Reese talk in more detail about what they've been doing um, in, in their schools and they'll, I'm sure, make some of those links for you. So uh, can I hand over to you first, Reese, and just uh, let you uh, talk a bit about what's been going on over the last few weeks at USP College? you'll need to unmute yourself first uh okay hi um yeah i'm Rhys. um so yeah i teach uh history and politics um so a lot of the students that we started with this year were uh history or politics students um but next year we'll be opening it up to everyone um so yeah it's not it's not just um like those, those kind of students um but even even with those students uh we've we found uh well, I found that there was a massive drive to kind of completely different things. Um, so as Asha mentioned, um, one of the, one of the things that the students really wanted to get involved with was the link between uh, European, like the European Space Agency um, and how the UK is still involved um, and how it works alongside that. So um, it was actually them who got in contact with uh, one of the students who got in contact with them asking for resources things like that and then they they um went about that um we also um thanks to uh daniel we we got to um work uh, talk to um glenn ford as well um ex mep talking about the rise of the far right um which was excellent and he's um happy to, to continue to, sorry to continue talking about um the rise of the far right in europe and uh, the links that that has with um the uk and how the uk was uh, helping to deal with that um, and then also going on into other subjects um as well in the future and hopefully we can link that back in um so that was that was all really interesting but with um with this project the i think the big thing um but the big benefit was the way in which the students really engage with it. Um, it was in terms of how I approached it. Um, I could kind of stand off a little bit and leave them to it. And I think that's the excellent part 
is that they come up with some incredible ideas um, and that when you give them okay let's uh, like you need to get engaged or like you need to um, come up with an event because um, we were given three tasks uh, that we had to complete this year which was have a debate um, look at culture and then set up a social media page basically uh, and an info point um, said that to the students they split they kind of split themselves off into groups um, I had one student who was all about social media um, and is uh, hopefully next week hopefully we'll have like a, a published article um, to do with the rise of the far right talk that we had um, and there's we had other students go off and do the uh, info point um, and they really got engaged in that learn a bit more and then we all came together for a, a big event um, about um, culture we listened we had some music playing um, information about what the um, what this whole scheme was um, how to get involved in it for next year students things like that uh, so it was during a tour day as well um, and that, that was like you say all about event planning and things there was a lot of engagement and I tried so the, the way that I approach approached it as well was to try and give them support in terms of setting things up but also getting them to try and engage with some of these other um, the other teachers and how they would get up uh, events set up within the college and things so that it's not so much work in terms of what I have to do but also them them learning how to do things so I, I went through like uh, different risk assessments with them and how you do stuff like that because obviously with COVID all events have that so that was, even even though it's maybe not something um that they were too thrilled with <laughs> it was certainly different things that they got involved with um and yeah they i i think uh, they certainly loved it um and i know that they're looking forward uh, all, all of them coming back next year to do um to engage with it again and i know from <laughs> like you say from today they were talking a lot about how they want to get involved with other schools um, and things like that but it's yeah it's, it's a, certainly an experience <laughs> oh that kind of covers everything that you're looking for there Fantastic. Thank you, Rhys. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to Charlotte from the Cherwell School. Um, Charlotte's got a few pictures to illustrate some of the things that they've been doing. Um, uh, Stuart, yes, uh, we will email out the full the full thing. Don't worry. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so uh, apologies if the pictures become a bit disconnected from what Charlotte's saying. I will try and uh, click click through, but I'm in control of the the slideshow and she's talking from uh, from Oxford. So apologies if there's a bit of a disconnect. Um, but Charlotte, I'll hand over to you now. Fantastic. Um, so we've um, run ours slightly differently in that we've done it for a very defined period of time uh, with our year 11 students. Uh, so we offered this programme to um, our year 11s after they finished their course with us, uh, so after the May half term. Uh, as a four week long project um, for them to complete um, and we organised it around four full days in school so they came back into school during their holidays uh, and they were with us from kind of nine till three each day and each uh, day one a week had a different theme so we started with um, thinking about values and shared values across Europe and our own individual values uh, we had one day looking at collaboration and leadership, one day looking at arts, culture and language, and one day looking at the future of the European Union. Um, but doing very similar activities to the kinds of ones that Greece has been mentioning. So our students um, compiled information for an info point, uh, researching the country that they became an unofficial ambassador for. Um, we did workshops where they considered their own political values and priorities and debated uh, amongst uh, groups in terms of how they prioritised those um, and started to introduce um, some of the complications moving from kind of values to policies. Um, we were able to bring in lots of external guests thanks to help from uh, Asha and from Daniel, um, including former MEPs. 
and um, people working in science research in Europe and science policy advice um, and um, people from within the kind of civil service uh, and, and European Parliament uh, offices. Um, and um, it was really um, empowering to show people the the various ways that you can be involved in influencing political decisions um, rather than um, a kind of default onto um, kind of protest and political activism, showing that that kind of political debate and influence can happen through uh, a kind of nuanced discussion of science policy just as much as it can uh, through a, a placard. Um, and our students um, have um, done things like um, compile lobby postcards, um, create their own manifestos, um, they've written articles about kind of specialist area, lots of them focusing on things like um, the EU Green Deal. Um, and we've been able to um, kind of publish some of those as well. And um, they have taken part in debates and discussions and um, cultural events we put on a film viewing. Um, and um, it's culminated in them doing what we've called kind of EPAS takeover lessons, uh, where each group has um, taken over a lesson for a year seven or eight class lower down the school um, and these are ranged through um, from uh, kind of social well-being lessons uh, we've had geography le lessons looking at the impact of climate change on migration across Europe uh, we've ha had um, sessions looking at quality of life and how you can um, compare quality of life across Europe um, and uh, today, a, a slightly less academic Euros Year 8 football tournament. Um, uh, unfortunately, England were knocked out in the semi-finals uh, of that one. Um, so it's been really empowering to see them taking those kind of leadership roles. And some students who um, perhaps wouldn't automatically put themselves forward for this kind of event, really stepping into, um, into those kind of um, leadership positions. Um, and seeing them as being more than just being the loudest uh, in a room and giving them a real space to do something meaningful um, with that. Fantastic, Charlotte. Thank you very much. And you too, Risa, I think. Um, so I guess what we're trying to uh, put across is that there are uh, a myriad ways to uh, get uh, your students to engage with um, uh, with the European Union, that it isn't simply about uh, a dry talk about the history or the, um, uh, um, uh, the the processes of passing regulations and negotiations and so on, but in fact there's all kinds of opportunities for giving your students leadership roles for thinking on the broadest spectrum about food, football, uh, sports, um, uh, um, space science uh, and all these kind of things. Um, so as part of the EPAS program, uh, these schools have been su supported to do that. And we also um, have regular kind of newsletters and so on where we're uh, sending out um, uh, sending out more materials and resources, um, letting people know about um, uh, what kinds of other methods they can be they can be using to uh, to engage their students in uh, learning about the European Union, the European Parliament, opportunities that are coming out of the EPLO office uh, or coming from the European Parliament itself. Um, just thought I would very quickly highlight uh, a few to you here. These are some uh, Europe at School is learning resources that were uh, put together um, for all of the schools that are taking part in EPAS across the EU. Um, these are uh, uh, all of those resources. You can see there's a teacher's manual that guides you through everything. Um, this is all on the epas.org.uk website. Um, at the moment, some of these resources um, don't work 100% for UK students. Most of them are, are, are great and really in, uh, very, very useful. Some of them are, are really intended for UK, uh, for EU citizens. And so uh, we'll, uh, we're adapting those over the, the summer. The ones that, um, uh, that are just um, where, where there needs a bit to be a bit of adaptation for UK schools. Um, this website here, what Europe does for me um, is a, an amazing resource of all kinds of information. Um, and so you can look up your particular region. So uh, uh, if you're in the Midlands in the United Kingdom, you can hone down on onto, to uh, yours. Have a look. What has the EU been doing? Um, or what was it doing up until 
uh, last year in uh, in your area. Um, you can have a look at what about the EU in my life? Uh, you can check, right, so EU rights and freedoms. Um, okay, I'm interested in cyberbullying. Uh, have a look on here. There's uh, PDFs to download, MP3s, um, links to further information. Uh, and the final section in here is about the EU sort of general EU policies, um, maybe of more interest for the sort of uh, politics students and so on. But again, you've got various downloads that you can get from each of those. It's a, a great resource for helping students to research and to think about um, a whole range of different things that they might um, might be interested in if they're uh, wanting to do something on the EU but don't know where to start. Um, European Youth Portal here, um, all kinds of uh, resources coming out of um, all of the European institutions, a great place uh, to find out how you can get involved with uh, and how your students can get involved with projects throughout the throughout the EU and the wider, uh, wider area. And the European Day of Languages, um, I'm not sure if any of the people uh, on this call are language teachers, but I know many of our uh, students, um, many of the senior ambassadors that are involved are. Um, and this European Day of Languages website has a whole uh, um, slew of resources that are there for you to use to engage with, um, uh, uh, to engage your students in those cultural uh, um, exchanges and, and so on. Uh, so I'll let, I'll hand over to Daniel now to explain kind of what um, the Ambassador Schools programme is and why it is that the European Parliament is running that. Yeah, no, I was just saying it's really nice to hear from both Charlotte and from Reese about your experiences um, and all of the amazing things that you've done. And I must say that I was, I particularly liked seeing my old boss, Mike Shackleton, in your classroom, Charlotte, because you will have realised what a treasure he is. He really is a treasure. And we've got lots of treasures like that up our sleeves, including people like Glyn Ford, Reese, who is also a bit of a treasure. I'm not as fond of him as I am of Mike, but anyway. Um, so, I mean, essentially what the European Parliament Ambassador School program is, is an EU-wide network of schools who are enthusiastic about teaching about the European Parliament, European democracy. That's really what it is. So it's got... On the one hand, the strength of the program, I think, is that it enables schools with our support to do lots of creative things. It enables us to share with schools who are interested lots of programs that we already run, a bit like Euroscola, for example, which is a simulation game which takes place in Strasbourg, the visits that we organize in Strasbourg for students, the teacher seminars that we organize in, well, we will do once COVID allows, in Brussels that teachers can attend to meet other teachers from other European Parliament ambassador school schemes from across the European Union. Um, all these things would all would all be funded, fully funded by the European Parliament. So these are lots of exciting opportunities that you can that you can sign up for, plus the possibility, as Asha mentioned, of organizing um, organizing events between schools in different member states. Um, I mean, this is the beauty of the network you know, that we all share resources, that we all share our expertise, and we try to create something, um, you know, that's exciting for students and that, that it really enriches their learning. So I'm not really sure whether I answered your question, is it why the European Parliament is doing this? Well, essentially, the European Parliament is doing this in the UK because the European Parliament wants to continue to have good relations with the Euro, with with UK citizens and particularly UK young citizens. I mean, this is really just about good public diplomacy, I suppose, you know, all, I mean, we regard ourselves a little bit as an embassy um, in the UK now that it is a, a third country. And we're keen that, you know, people have, know about the European Union and as far as possible that they like the European Union. Um, so that's that's really what, what this is all about. It's all about public diplomacy. Um, and, and, and of course, um, from the point of view of students, and again, as Asha mentioned, 
the European Union will, of course, continue to be enormously relevant to the lives of of all UK citizens and particularly younger citizens, just because it's a it's a big, important neighbour just across the channel. So you know, um, it makes absolute sense for this to be taught in schools, despite the fact that the UK is no longer a member of the European Union. So um, that's it, really. I I I think that I should probably stop because we're coming up to 30 minutes and Asha doesn't want to make this a long, a long disquisition. But um, yeah, basically, you know, the, the sky's the limit in terms of what we can do together. Um, you know, we have funding, uh, we have um, some ideas and we're willing to support, you know, your creative ideas as well. So I, I just hope that we can carry on in this vein. Which, thank you, Daniel, and that brings me very neatly to my next slide, which is, uh, what does it cost? Um, and it costs nothing yes. to your schools. Um, and in fact, there may well be funding available um, for uh, events that you want to run um, for those trips to uh, for, for teachers and for students um, uh, are funded by the European Parliament. Um, so the EPAS programme that uh, uh, Rhys and Charlotte and their, their schools and colleges have been part of um, is supported by Involver. So it's set up by um, the European Parliament. It's been running for a few years already across the EU. Uh, last year, or this year, we're just finishing this academic year, we're just finishing, we piloted it in the UK and we did a very kind of compressed version of it. Um, what we would encourage you to do, um, if you're interested, is to uh, take a, this on from uh, September and become part of the first full cohort of uh, European Parliament ambassador schools and along with Daniel being able to organize very interesting people to come in to your schools Involver will be there on a day-to-day -day basis to support you sending out newsletters sending out new resources helping you research helping you create new resources and providing you with a clear roadmap of what activities you need to do to get that accreditation um, so uh, what you can see on the image here is a dashboard uh, each of your schools will be given a login to um, uh, uh, to uh, the, the the website where you'll be able to upload your evidence um, and towards the end of the year um, you'll receive accreditation if you've uploaded all of that evidence if we've been able to see what's been going on in your schools. May I'll come to you in a minute I'll just quickly uh, um, get through these. So the way the structure in the uh, in the program is that we have senior and junior ambassadors in the school. You as the teachers would be the senior ambassadors. Um, those would be eligible for uh, training from Involver and hopefully COVID allowing training in uh, networking events in Brussels and Strasbourg. Um, but your primary job would be to um, inspire uh, a group and recruit a group of junior ambassadors who would be students. Uh, these are the people that Reese and, and Charlotte were talking about taking the lead in, in, in their uh, schools and colleges um, and that they run the events uh, that, um, that work towards your accreditation. Uh, they run those events within your school. Um, so hopefully uh, it's something which is quite manageable. We have hundreds thousands of teachers across the EU who are finding it quite manageable we have our fantastic pilot schools and colleges that have found it um, uh, a useful thing to run alongside uh, their day-to-day -day teaching um, and hopefully with some useful rewards as well from the EPLO in terms of uh, extra resources extra training extra um, uh, accreditation for you so I will open it up to questions now um, Mayor you had your hand up Hi. Uh, yes, so um, I, I'm Mayor Shabbat and I teach at Isha College, which is a sixth form college. And, and um, I, I'm really excited about the, uh, the, the ideas behind this, uh, this project. Uh, it is the right thing to do um, philosophically and, and ideologically, if one is, is allowed to say so nowadays. Um, my concern is about the practicalities. So, um, for example, um, Charlotte's school, they've, they've dedicated the final term 
um, of of this academic year for, for 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 the project, and and that was a luxury given that they didn't have the GCSEs exams uh, th that year. Um, so m my concern is about the implications that this type of involvement will have on the curricular provision that schools um, must prioritize. So, for example, in my college, it's it's about the A levels and man managing a very busy specification. Um, is is it manageable? So, well, I will ask, I'll let Reese come to that in a second, because I think his 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 college is probably, uh, you know, ha has a, 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 a uh, um, some similar pressures to you. Uh, and I'm sure Charlotte's, the sixth form at Charlotte's school will as well. Um, but one thing is that part of the reason why they've compressed it this year is because we, in the pilot, we only actually gave schools a few weeks to run it. Um, this coming year, you will have the whole academic year to do so. So there are um, a few events that need to be run each term, probably two events, in fact, each term. Um, and the, what we would encourage you to do is in, engage a wide range of students. So it's not one small group of students who are running all of those things and taking up all of those time, but maybe uh, one group of students who want to do something for Europe Day, another group of students who feel like they want to set up a debate, want to invite in one or two speakers. So. Um, Within uh, extracurricular activities, it will also fit in quite neatly to things like Duke of Edinburgh as well, uh, and can be used, sort of the evidence and those activities can be used for, for other extracurricular things that you're doing as well. Um, but I'll let ask Reese and Charlotte to, to chip in and, and see how they feel it might work in a normal or a more normal year. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Um, so in terms of time so we we didn't get any dedicated time uh from the usp college it was just uh just straight in uh in amongst the a levels because we were we were still uh teaching going through everything um we so what we did was we started with just monday lunches um we'd meet up uh for 45 minutes monday lunch what ideas do you have what what do you actually want to get out of this uh what do you want to do and then uh, I set up a, a Teams group for them and we'd discuss uh, any extra things that they come up during the week with and they'd kind of do it independently. Um, and they'd come to me like during the week, say, oh, I really want to do this. Uh, can we can we sort something out along these lines? Um, and we'd get that done. And then it actually got to the point where um, they, they said, oh, can we actually have another session uh, later on in the week? Um, where we can meet up again, all just meet up again and discuss ideas and start uh, writing out. Now, obviously, that's dependent on whether you have the time in terms of your own lunches. But um, yeah, so we we went from just Mondays to having Mondays and Thursdays um, of, of focusing on EPAS and, and getting things done because they, they enjoyed it enough that they wanted to spend their lunches doing it. Um, so yeah, it's it's totally doable in in lunches. Uh, they they just have to be willing to also put in a little bit of independent uh, time as well. Thanks very much, Reese. And so Charlotte, now now that you've done the pilot, how are you envisaging it running next year? Yeah, I think um, similarly, whilst we've done it as single days, we haven't had um, kind of set time for it. And um, so it's very much um, done on kind of ad hoc basis um, on my availability. Um, our lunch breaks are very short, so we only have half an hour and we are a split site school. So it's very difficult to do um, lunch time activities. So I think I probably still envisage it being a kind of project based approach rather than a continuous thing across the year. Um, with short bursts of high levels of activity. Um, similarly to Reese, we've also then used um, Google Classroom to allow students to kind of self-organise between sessions. Um, and they have then independently, we've put them into groups and they've kind of run with those um, in most cases. Um, so um, I think for us, the way I see it continuing is not for it to be a sustained thing across the year, um, but for it to be kind of short, sharp bursts of project based activity, but spread at times where there's a bit of capacity. Fantastic, thank you. And I think that is um, one of the uh, sort of beauties of, of this project is it is very, very flexible in how you run it. 
we have um, certain key criteria of things that need to be done over the course of the year. It's not um, uh, other than Europe Day, which has a particular kind of date to, attached to it. Everything else, um, some schools may choose to really spread it out. Others may choose to um, uh, collapse it. Some may uh, run this as a, a, an extracurricular activity. Others may put it into something like a kind of social studies lesson um, or a, a time to, uh, some other sort of timetabled slot. Um, we've really, even through the pilot, seen very, very uh, um, great variety of different ways that schools are running this. So um, I think that's part of the strength of the programme and uh, it's something that we as Involvo will be very help, uh, happy to help you think through and also to put you in touch with other schools that have done it already and see how have they done it, how have they managed those. And hopefully those uh, answers from, from Reese and Charlotte have been helpful to you, Mayor. Great. Well, in that case, uh, I am going to, because we have run over a bit, I uh, do apologise for that, um, uh, but um, so I'm going to draw things to a close. Um, and so thank you all very much for attending. And uh, if you would like to uh, receive more information, um, epass.org.uk is the place to go. Uh, uh, we will um, send out a, a, a survey to find out whether you uh, have further questions, whether you're intending on signing up for next year. Um, uh, but do feel free to uh, drop me an email at any point if you have any other questions or put into the chat on the uh, uh, on the epass.org.uk website and I will get back to you uh, as soon as I can. So thank you all very much and I uh, hope you all have a pleasant uh, rest of the week and uh, a pleasant um, summer holiday if uh, we don't speak before then. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.